another race day vlog this time from Castle Coombe it's very foggy I've just come to the side of the track to see if I could see two marshals posts because that's how they work out whether if you can see two marshals posts I'll let them out if not you have to wait and currently I can't I can see one there's one stood right by it um can't see anything else it's uh so yeah don't think we're going to be out on time it's at half eight is supposed to be out for qualifying and then 12 30 is race one and three o'clock is race two but yeah we're here we're on time for once it's it's very early right now it's like half seven maybe 7 45 yeah let's see how the day goes Hopefully it's gonna be a good day so there is a car coming there it is Oh, it's a van parking up here but yeah you can see just how foggy it is so that's how foggy it is that's where they come out the pit lane and down the track very foggy though so I don't think we're going going out at half eight particularly bad between 9 and 10. That's been the sticking point. Uh, 9 and 10 and 10 is uh, is tower in. Okay, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty difficult part of the circuit as well. What I've done, just to get things moving, I put an interim flag post on the left hand side. Okay, so just to, just to drive through with you, you come through the S's, okay, and you come through what was old paddock, um, then you have a, a, a flag point on the right hand side, which is nine, and the flag point on the left hand side on the approach to tower is ten. Come back from that, and I've put a flag point at the at the fire point on the left hand side behind the behind the armco. So that nine can now see the interim flag point and ten can see the interim flag point. So we've now established that contact post to post. <laughs> Was qualifying? Hot. Mark, considering it's only 10 minutes. <laughs> it's a very bumpy track. I didn't realize how bumpy it is. I thought they sorted the bumps out. 
But my Tour 5, because that's got more expensive suspension, so it's not bumps nicely, because this is a cheaper suspension and bounce around the place. Where did I finish? Well, 21st on track. Ah, oh, pow, 122. <laughs> Flipping it. 122.79. It was my last lap, yeah, my fastest, yeah. I just couldn't get a freaking space. What's Parky up to? Is there a problem? Are you sure? Hopefully. Well, I should hope so. <laughs> Whereabouts are you in on the two six side? Third. Well, I'd like to be first. Oh no, hold on. Wakely. Wakely did me as well. Fourth. <laughs>
coming down towards Cap Corner at the moment. Still looks like he's up to speed. Maybe the head there of the number one car, of Tony Hunter, the sort of white Renault clear with the uh, Tricolor, French Tricolor on the roof. Yeah, he's still up to speed there, but Sean Gomez. I keep thinking it's like little pumps of smoke coming from that car as well.
he's uh, going to be delighted that it's still starting on the front row, but he has some work to do, whatever they've changed. As Ian said earlier, he's, he's quicker than he went in qualifying, he's in the lead, he's keeping that under control. He has the quickest lap of this race. Short goes to the to your car? Well, it looked fine on track. Weirdly, it was fine until the safety car came out. And then it started inspiring. So what have you done? Change the coil. And the spark. And hopefully that'll fix it. Mm. For five lights, off it goes. Wow, that was quick. There was no hanging about there. The Renault 5 number 87 didn't get the best of starts there, and it's being sort of swallowed up by quite a few of the cars. Now, Sean Gover did his usual fabulous start, but he's been already passed by Rich Hockley and the 33 car, Chris Bassett. So, that uh, second phase didn't quite go to plan. The 206s are also starting and doing their usual thing, a three wide, but up towards you is Rich Hockley, isn't he? Thank you. 
Sun and he's got through so David Clark's got through into fourth place there at Bobby's but he's a long way behind the top three now Chris. Yeah impressive fight back there though the top three are glued together down towards Cap I wondered whether they were going to pull away from Sean but not a chance the three of them glued together through goes Hockley the 33 car of Chris Bassett and Sean Govan right with them then it is already the 87 car, the uh, lovely David Clark's Renault 5 GT, up into that fourth place and pulling away. It'll be interesting what that fancy does to try and reel these top three in, but at the moment, they're the ones that have broken away.
Well, we haven't come out to qualifying a race one yet. Should we have done that? <laughs> well, yeah, let's go back then. Qualifying. Oh, okay. I was quali oh, you did qualifying, sort of. Really? Yeah, you were sat on the chair. Okay. Didn't qualify too bad, is it? For fourth in class. Uh, race one. Fantastic. Really enjoyed race one. Brilliant start. Fourth on the grid. I was in first position by the time we got to Quarry Corner and um, I held first position for a lap and a half and then Carl snuck past me <laughs> um, and I thought he's just got more horsepower than me because he, he got past me going down the start finish straight but then the next lap I came along, drew alongside him, didn't I surpass him, I drew alongside him. and it was amazing slipstream. I mean, I've, I've never experienced that so much as in the 206. Um, Clopper really made a difference in slipstream, gave you some good extra miles now. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, I was just checking the road, just pulling into another bit of road. Uh, 
but yeah, we had a really good race. Uh, his son, Will, did get past me, but then, so the three of us were battling closely for several laps, which is good, and that's what it should be like. At the front, in the tour sixes, single make series, uh, all battling together, and we are, were having a good battle. Then, Carl actually, uh, he said it jumped out because they've got these old little sausage curves in the chicanes. Yeah. Carl said his car just jumped out of gear, so a quick pops to him. But I had that moment when, <laughs> when you're on the acceleration and the car in front stops accelerating, and Will was right up behind him. So he gave me a little headbutt, which slowed Will down, and I was probably a car's length behind. Luckily, I had the momentum to get past Will. get up behind Carl and then when we went into the last corner well, I did go in pretty quickly and Will tried to go in as fast as me and all of a sudden I just saw him spearing off to my left behind me and uh, he just lost the rear end he, was, he missed the tyres um, but apparently he then hit the tyres somewhere else uh, and then yeah proceeded to follow Carl so I thought well I'll follow him for a couple of laps and just see where I'm strong and where he's strong. Wasn't a lot in it. The cars were so closely managed. Um, so it was going to have to be a real proper dive. Because I did get past him, but then he got me back again. So we're having a little tussle. Uh, and then safety car came out and it was close to the end of the race and we actually went over checking flag safety and the safety car. Mm -hmm. That was race one, which was a good late race, very enjoyable. But then I've got to say, during the safety car, car started misfiring. Thought it was the coil pad. Well, we changed the plugs, or I changed the plugs. I mixed the mechanic. <laughs> then I changed the coil pad. It seemed to be all right. Um, but then, yeah, it, was, it seemed okay in the race, but then I s suddenly started losing horsepower because I had a good tussle with car got, uh, well, off the line, me and Kevin went either side of car. Kevin was in the lead, then Carl just outbraked him going into quarry. Uh, I was behind Kevin. It took me a lap or so to get past him, and uh, in that time, Carl had got a bit of a gap on us. Um, and I thought I had the legs on Kevin, but then he started crawling all over me again. Uh, and obviously, my car was starting to lose horsepower again. Um, which was frustrating uh, and it actually became a little bit of a um, dull race because of it because Carl had a gap on Kevin Kevin then got a gap on me um, oh I did have Will coming up behind me but then I don't know what it is but he got up behind me and then he spun again <laughs> <laughs> so I think yeah, he tries to get around the corners as quick as I was going but wasn't quite doing it uh, and then, yeah, so he disappeared, so it was, yeah, Carl, Kevin, and me, first, second, third, second race, not as exciting as the first race, for me anyway. Yeah. And that was it. So hopefully it'll be out at Donington next. Yeah, that's, when, four weeks? Yeah. It's a longer time this time, so. So it got a bit of time to get the car sorted just like to be able to compete right at the front and actually win a race would be nice. I'm working on it. That'd be nice to have, Donington. See what I can do.